Welcome to this edition of Catch Up with Cairo Touch. This is Dr. Ronnie Sims. I'm your host today. Thank you so much for tuning in. And as always, as you know, you're in for a real treat because we always have the best guests on this show. I am so blessed by this show personally. And today, um, for the second time, I'm blessed to have my dear friend, my brother in the Lord, uh, one of my favorite chiropractors ever, the de facto MC of chiropractic, and that's Dr. Matt Hubbard. How you doing, bud? You're the best, man. Thanks for that intro. I'm no doing problem, fantastic, man. man. It's my day to do other things on this Love fine, it. oh, beautiful day in San Diego. So mm. I'm excited. Thanks for the invite, man. I'm always honored to be here. I know we got a, a great topic I'm passionate about and uh, can't wait to dive into it, man. And we could go so many different directions with this because... I know what you have going on in your life, and there's so many nuggets that you've learned outside of the realm of chiropractic. And I know with your entrepreneurial club, your businesses, and your pastoral uh, role, you have so many little layers that this stuff wraps into. But for the, for the sake of today, we're going to be speaking mostly into the chiropractic practice, as you know. And so I'm just going to dive right in. You know, we talk about these, um, the whole topic of today was kind of the goal setting and the goal getting you know, I know that's been a big part of you and your life and your team over the last 15 years that I've known you. And so first question to kind of hit this off is, as you really look at your true vision, as doctors look out and create that vision of where they want to go, um, you know, how important are metrics within that and, and you know, measurables? And, and what are those key metrics to Matt Hubbard as far as uh, measuring that vision yeah. and how that's working? Yeah. You know, I really want to make it personal, man. I've had a lot of time to think about it since our last, you know, technical glitch. Uh, listen, chiropractors, I'm in the trenches. Uh, I graduated in 2001. I was an associate under a great, great chiropractor. It's now Dr. Ron Oberstein, who's the president of Life Chiropractic College West. Um, I've been an independent contractor. I've been a single practitioner. I've been multi-clinic. I've been, you name it. I've done all the different things. I've looked into franchising. I've looked into everything. I will say that uh, now in, in this year, uh, I will tell you that I'm 20, 21 years in practice, which is mind blowing. Uh, I still feel like I'm young. I still feel like um, I could get in with the best of them and I never forget where I come from. So I just wanna give you context of who's talking to you today. I'm not up here to um, Im impress you or talk about numbers, but I still, and Dr. Ronnie here can attest to it. I still have a high functioning, vitalistic, passionate practice. I've had 23 of my patients become chiropractors and I've had seven CAs become chiropractors. And I've had a lot of people at my church that have done internship become chiropractors. So I think I'm over uh, 32 uh, people that have been influenced by my practice to become chiropractors. And when I get to 33 for the 33 principles, um, I think that's my sign. Maybe, maybe I could do other things. But um, to give you context on one more thing, success leaves clues. I easily have a million dollar cash practice. Uh, it's well over that. And for those of you that don't believe me, just come to San Diego. I still, I have people shadow me on Fridays. Dr. Ron was one of those guys that probably didn't believe me back in the day and had his associate go, duh, you got to go see my friend. He came down and we became friends since that. We've done a lot of amazing things together. And I love the fact that you were in practice longer and you still gave enough room going, hey, I'm not going to be the type of guy that's been in practice saying I can't learn from somebody else. And I've always admired you for that and respected you for that, that you still figured you can learn. Just like me, I go into younger guys and I pick up what they do and then I make it better because I can afford to. Um, <laughs> but I had to bootstrap it. You know, I had to get in the, I had to get in and I lived on a uh, wine taste with a beer income for a lot of years. Um, now I live in my dream house, go on my dream vacations one of the biggest givers in my church. I do a lot of radical things. And uh, it is all because of being around excellent clinicians and entrepreneurs. I now own restaurants. I 
teach a Maverick entrepreneur. I run a Pathfinders apprenticeship program at my church that has over 350 graduates of guys that were broke and women that were broke. And they're all on the way to making millions of dollars. And we help do that with funding the kingdom, which is our purpose, you know? So a lot of cool things that I learned from being around chiropractors. Everything I've learned is from books and the greatest minds I believe in the world, which were chiropractic minds, because if you're a great healer, you have to learn how to be a great business person. Otherwise, guess what? You'll be a broke healer. And uh, I know people always give me flack about it because I teach a lot on money, but here's the truth. Money does not buy you happiness. Everybody knows that. I know that. But guess what? Being broke doesn't buy you a damn thing. So you're no good if you're a broke chiropractor. And my job, why I said yes to this interview is if you can take one thing, one seed, and I can get it to sprout and build a tree that produces fruit, you'll be self-sustaining. So um, nothing I am going to teach right now has anything to do with theory. It is all what has worked and produced multiple fruit trees in my life. So with that being said, you asked me a question, are metrics important? Metrics, goals are everything because it's a target in front of you and fuzzy targets don't get hit. Clarity is king. My job is to help you understand. I don't care if you're the greatest adjuster. If you don't have clarity on where you're going, who are you going to adjust? Okay. You, you have to have business sense and you've got to have a vision for where you're going. Now you want to be sustainable. I know a lot of guys that had a million dollar practice for a year, two years, and then they self imploded because they didn't have core values. Core values is what you build the foundation on. You can Google up how to do core values exercises. You can reach out to people. There's lots of coaches that teach on it. Listen, some of the greatest friends in my life are coaches and chiropractic. There's a lot of people teaching on core values, but core values are what is the foundation that you don't build your house on the sand. You build it on the rock. You build your practice on a rock. Once you have core values, you then set your goals to keep the vision in front of you. And that vision in front of you is the fuel that keeps you on fire because you have purpose. If you don't have purpose, then what are you doing? I don't want to just sell crack for a living. What do you think I have? The crack house? I got the best crack in San Diego, but that's not what makes me do what I do. No, no. I want to see people's lives changed. So I took numbers off the board. I have lives changed. Okay. I have people served, which is my patient visits, lives changed or lives saved is new patients. And then reward is how much I collect. So I know if I serve big, if I save lives and change lives and impact minds and align some spines, then guess what? There's going to be a great reward financially. So I never worry about the reward. I always work on the service part of it. I end up well. Now, what I want to tell you is that, uh, Unfortunately, I don't have eight hours. I teach an eight hour course every December and in January, just on goal setting. It's a fat daddy book. I go on a deep dive on it, full book. I have it online recorded. I probably need to get it out there one day, but that's how big of an idea goal setting is. So I'm going to give you just a little flair to help you because I want you to think a little bit differently. What you need to understand is every week, you need to focus on where you're at. So it's like a GPS pen. If Dr. Ronnie said, hey, I want to come visit you. Where are you at? I'm going to drop him a pen drop. That's his GPS. So you got to know where you're at and you got to know where you want to go. I don't go on vacation and go, babe, let's go on vacation. Where do you want to go? No clue. You know what I do? I just did a road trip to Zion. We booked an Airbnb, fat daddy cabin. Every day we had a plan. Every day we had uh, metrics of weather was doing this. We do this of weather was doing that. I planned it out to the T and guess what? I just gave my family the greatest vacation everywhere because I had clarity on exactly what I wanted the outcome to be right. and where I wanted to go. And then I dialed it in backwards. See, if you have a goal for a million dollar practice, what does that look like? You have to know what your per visit average is. You got to know what all the little metrics are, which are all important to getting there. You just can't say, I want a million dollar practice. Like, here's the thing. I'm, I'm right now, I'm freaking overweight. I'm a little bit pissed off it. Thank you. Got a little gray hair. But guess what? I just set a goal. I want to be 80, uh, 185. I literally have uh, 20 pounds to lose. I just backed it in. I know my goal is uh, June 15th. 
I backed it in what I'm going to do every week, every month, every day. I looked at what I'm going to do for food wise. I know what I'm going to do for morning. I know what my exercise is going to be. I hired a trainer. I got a food consultant. I got a nutrition consultant. I'm doing a cleanse right now. I'm not drinking wine, which I love wine uh, until that July, uh, that June 15th. And it's pedal to the metal. And when I hit my goal, I'm going to celebrate big. Okay. When I, if I miss my goal, guess what? I'm writing a fat daddy, daddy check because I want it to hurt to something I don't like. Okay. So I have a couple of things that I don't like. One of them, I shouldn't even say politics, but Mussolini drives me crazy, but whatever. <laughs> and, and I will support his campaign with a thousand dollars if I miss my objective, which let me tell you, I'm not writing that guy a thousand dollar check. It's pain driven because I need to make sure that there's consequence for me slack. So last night I took my team out to dinner, my doctors, and I said, I want to bless you. So man, we had, we had a great steak. We had a great everything and everybody else drank some wine. Everybody else had, you know, some cream brulee. I had to sit there and be like, mm, mm. and it hurt, but guess what? I'm hitting my goal. Uh, because I want to be driven to that goal. I have to build discipline. You got to kill the flesh. There's desires that we get lazy in. I meet a lot of chiropractors that are just lazy. They say they want this, but they don't do it and they're unwilling to put the work in. I'm living the life I want because I put in the hard work by going after goals, hitting those goals, celebrating those goals and winning. One thing I want to tell you is a 13 week success tracker. I look at this. I know a lot of chiropractors, they grind, 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 grind. And when you're single, grind your face off. All right. I wouldn't go out on a Friday night unless I hit my new patient goal for the week. So if I didn't hit my new patient goal for the week, let's just call it 10 patients a week. If I didn't see 10 new clients in a week back in the day, okay, I knew Friday afternoon, I'm done at noon. I need to go out and screen somewhere. I need to go pass my card out. I need to go out and do these daily rituals of getting myself out there, talking to chiropractic. Hey, I'm a chiropractor and Matt Hubbard, come and see me. Here's my card. Love to be your chiropractor. Hey man, who's your Cairo? I had shirts made, hats made. Who's your Cairo? You know, being near the border in San Diego, they'd be like, who's your Chiro? Shut up. That doesn't say Chiro. It says Cairo. <laughs> What's a Cairo? I'm a chiropractor. Right. Man. Who's your chiropractor? Oh, I don't need one. Well, I had a response for that. I was ready for that. Here's my card. You might not think you need me, but now guess what? You got my card. Here's one to keep. Here's one to lose. Now with all the digital techie stuff, hey, take my QR code, take my picture. Here I'm at. Send a video to him. Whatever it takes. Early to bed, early to rise, work like hell and advertise. There you go. Do what it takes to be the man or woman you want to be to get the objectives and the goals you want to hit. So if I didn't do it, if they wouldn't book a new patient, I couldn't get to 10. Guess what? Saturday, I was out grinding. Sunday, day of rest. Very few times I wouldn't hit my goal by Sunday. But guess what? My friends went out on a Friday night. I want to go out on a Friday night. I didn't hit my goal. Have consequence. Right. Build great habits. Do the things that you don't want to do. But guess what? I'm living the life I want a life that a lot of other chiropractors want, and then they'll judge me for. But they don't know what I did to sacrifice to get what I have. We got to quit being soft. We got to put the work in, get the technology, get the marketing, get the things you need to do. So what happens is I know a lot of people who grind it out. I'm married, three kids, businesses. I can't just grind it out. But what I do, my wife knows quarter one, don't mess with me. Pedal to the metal quarter one. I celebrate quarter two. We just hit our goals for quarter one. Biggest goal setting session I've ever done. Most collections we've ever collected. Most people we've ever seen. All this stuff. And I'm 20 something years in, but my team is on board with all the vision, all the dreams. They know the goal every week. I'd be like, how much, how much closer to my goal? Dr. Matt, we're 22% closer to our goal. Sweet. Dr. Matt, we're 38% of our goal. Dr. Matt, we're 44% of our goal. Dr. Matt, we're 82% of our goal. We had a week to go, 3% left on our goal. Let me just tell you, they were pedal to the metal. I called in that Saturday before. I'm like, you what are you doing in my office on a Saturday? Whatever it takes. Whatever it takes, because they wanted to go to Cabo on the doctor's dime. So guess what? My entire team's going to Cabo with spouses, and we're going to have the time of our life. They had the visual. They had the resort. They know where we're staying. They know everything. They know that they're getting $100 a day to go blow whatever they want. They're going to live the high life for four days because they work their butt off to serve people to recharge. Now, quarter three, we grind it out again. We celebrate quarter four. Now, what I realized is you hard charge, build momentum, momentum will carry you quarter two, hard charge, quarter three, momentum, quarter four, reset it for the new year. 
if you just do this, 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 you will have burnout and you'll crash. You can do it for a season, but not a lifestyle. So what I tell you is I do these master tracks for 13 weeks. I said at the bottom, goal, reward, 13 weeks. And I do categories every day, different category. Dr. Matt, how do you do that? Well, I have a different calendar that's up in my office. I put all our vacations. I put all our birthdays or anniversaries of my whole team. We have everything on there. When people are going on vacation, we see it all. And then this little wheel over here that's blank, it's my marketing wheel. Every mm -hmm. month, we don't guess what we're doing. We know what we're doing. And it's thoughtless. It's a system. It's a structure. We go after it. I learned this from Dr. Mike Reed years ago, and then I've made it my own, tweaked it, turned it, everything. But in that marketing wheel, I just want to tell you, I have quarterly objectives. I have self objectives. Every one on my team fills out a self objective, meaning how are you taking care of yourself? How do I stay so high energy? Because I'm doing self care. Is my team getting adjusted? Are they getting scanned? Are they logging themselves in? Are they on the table? No one on my team. I always meet chiropractors that don't adjust their team. I'm like, what's wrong with you? You know why I have a high functioning team? Because they're high functioning people. Meaning I want to make sure they're clear and connected so they can be clear and connected. I want to be a healer. So I need to be in a healing place. So self-care, daily morning rituals, all these things are so important. Then I have social media. I have a whole checklist for social media now. Just are we staying in front of our people? Because it's important that we do that. The next one, internal marketing. What are the touch points internally? I don't want to go out there. I've never paid for outside marketing ever. You know why? Because my internal marketing is on point. Let me give you some ideas of internal marketing. These are all the things that I set KPIs towards, okay? So these are, I set a stat for all these. Do Am I giving uh, family gift certificates away? Am I doing a testimonial day? Am I doing a referral basket? I have a little baby basket. All my moms that give birth, when they come back in and bring me their kid, first adjustment for their brand new newborn is on me. I give them a full gift, a onesie that says, who's your Cairo? With my hashtag, true Cairo on their booty. And then I give them diapers. I give them all the little things. I give them a little passy that says true chiropractic on it. Man, they're going around with that passy. They're loving it. I give them all these things. I give them one of those... Um, pathways about the ICPA. I get all the magazines. I give them a pathways. I give little experts what foods when. I put this little basket together and give it to mom and dad and said there's no greater honor than a giving being a chiropractor for your newborn. It's like Simba. Oh, pass me your child. It's like we set goals for that. How many babies do I want to adjust? That's a lifestyle. If you're giving me your baby, mom and dad are patients for life. Come on, man. And so products, specials, supplements, you know, I, what's my supplement of the month? Uh, March Madness, we do Arch Madness. So I know March every time there's different themes. So that's internal marketing, bring a friend or a family member, point of sales once a month, you know, we give something up, patient appreciation day, I do three times a year, external marketing, marketing monitors, what do I look for? What's my vision board say? What's my 90 days to prep, 30 days to launch? How's my new patient log? How's my, uh, my website? What must it have? I have a special website. I want to make sure it's good. I want to make sure that I have a technology that collects reviews for me. So, you know, I have my review wave, but it puts it up there. And that's why everyone comes in. It's on Google. It's like, I didn't, I didn't go market them. Guess what? That's because I have 900 reviews that are like 4.8 stars. Of like, who the H is this guy? You know, it's like, what the heck? You just got to do these things. You build momentum. You just start somewhere. When I say, how do you eat an elephant? You know what my biggest response is? One bite at a time, that still is overwhelming. You know what I say? Don't stare at the elephant, stare at the fork. How do you need an elephant? Stare at the fork. Focus on the fork, focus on the fork. Look at the metrics of your practice. Quit getting all enamored by fuzzy, shiny things and just stay in it, focus, focus. It takes 60 to 90 days to see results. That means like one quarter. Don't keep changing things because you think two weeks in, it doesn't work. Stick to a plan, maintain the plan, work the plan, look at your plan, change it quarterly. Don't change it weekly. I meet one chiropractor going this way this month, that way next month, this way. I mean, man, it's like your golf game. It's Z golf all over the place. Just work on one element of the game. I'm learning pickleball right now. I'm learning how to dap, dap, 
tap. You know what I mean? I'm getting my butt kicked, but I'm not in it for the short term. I'm not making bets that I'm going to beat you. I'm working on my little aspects of the game because I just, I'm learning pickleball and I'm having 80 year olds kick my butt. You Absolutely. know what? But I guarantee in three months from now, because I'm working on one aspect of my game, I'm going to get one tool and it's going to be my secret weapon. I'm going to put these old people down. You know what I mean? And when I whoop them, then I'm going to go take on the next level of my game. I'm going to perfect one piece of my game at a time till I'm pick up all San Diego champion. So I declare a thing. That's so right. in this marketing thing, I'm just going to land the plane on this. You can ask me any question you want. Is that good? No, keep going, man. I have a couple of questions, but I like you got a Let couple me, of things. Uh, ask me off this. Here we go. Here's your calendar. This is what I want you all doing. Okay. You draw the centristic circles. This is what makes you successful. And then you work around all these goals. What's your theme of the month? Everybody needs a theme of the month. I can give you ideas if you need it, but January wellness, February heart, because it's Valentine's. Let's have a little heart. Uh, March is, you know, chiropractic. And then April could be, uh, you know, I do May, I do moms and pregnancy. June, it's dads because of Father's Day. July, it's sports. Research in August. September is children and chiropractic. Um, so I have different themes for every month. Have a theme for your whole practice that your whole team could get on. My front office will take January. My back office will take February. So they can always be pre-gaming. Then when my back office is working on February, because they're now initiating February, my front office is already on uh, March. We're always a month ahead of the game. So then the theme has to line up with your social media theme. What's going to go along with it? Are you having a workshop that's based in your theme? Are you doing a promo based in your theme? What is your networking based on your theme? Do you have a recall letter based on your theme? Do you have a referral basket based on your theme? Your dinner workshops, what's your big fish, okay? But this is so important. Most chiropractors are just, every month it's something different. It's never planned, it's off the cuff. Mine, this has never changed in the last nine years. We already know what we're doing. It's nothing new. We just recycle it because you know what? It's drip. You know what Michael Jordan said? You want to win champions? Stick to the fundamentals. That's right. Just stick to the fundamentals. So those goals have to be based in the fundamentals. Do the same things consistently and you'll see results. Dr. Ronnie, what do you want to ask me? No, no, I'm, I'm, I'm taking notes, man. This is great. So let me ask you a question. You, you mentioned um, some of our profession just lazy. They're kind of knocked on their butt right now. They're tired. They're not sure. So just a couple um, little quick advice for that type of guy and gal that's just sitting back going, man, this Matt guy's full of energy. I can't keep up with this guy. That's him. What do I do? You know, so some truth into that, that lazy doc who maybe is stuck. You need a start doing list and a stop doing list. Yep. What are the things you're doing that are consuming your time? Are you gaming? Are you playing solitaire? What is taking up? Are you scrolling on Instagram? You know what I mean? Are you coming up with a clever TikTok? I mean, you can if there's an ROI, right? If there's a return on your investment of your time spent, time is money. Where are you wasting your time? I always say this. I don't care what you say. Show me your bank account and show me your calendar and I'll tell you what's important to you. That's right. So all I have to do is when I look at your calendar and I look at, I'm like, look at all this free time you have. How can I run a church? How can I run restaurants? How can I have an online business? How can I run a practice that sees a lot of people? Guess what? Systematize. My calendar is dialed in. There are no accidents. Everything. I don't, I wake up. Here's the truth. Mondays. I know in my office all day Mondays, I have a team meeting. I'm done with, I'm done with my practice in the morning. I then have new patients, ROTs, team meeting at 12. It never changes. I know every single Monday at 12, team meeting. One o'clock to two o'clock, I refresh, I recalibrate, lay on my bed, let my body heal. Then I have an afternoon session. Tuesdays, I know what my whole day looks like. Pastoral care, coffee break, coaching sessions. I don't care who I'm coaching. I just know from nine to 10, I have a coaching session. At 10 to 11, I have a pastoral meeting. I don't care who shows up on my screen or in person. I know it never changes every Tuesday. At three o'clock, like right now, you're cutting into my family time. On Tuesday, family time starts at three. I'm done. Phones off and my family time until that's it. I carve out family time. Date night. Everybody in my entire world knows date nights. It's, it's Thursday night after practice. No one even invites me out anymore because they know it's my wife and I's date night. So all these things are, I live in a rhythm and a flow. And if we can schedule your life in a rhythm and a floor, you won't be drained. 
you won't yeah. be off purpose. You'll be on purpose. Well, yeah, and I think that's a misconception. When somebody is listening to you, it can be overwhelming. But the reality is you did the hard work to put in the systems, the processes, the procedures, but you have a free spirit within that to be mad and to be fun. And to and so speak into that because I know you're an amazing guy, don't get me wrong, but you could not do any of this without an understanding wife, but also speak into the Katrinas of the world, uh, those integrators and those teammates that help us get this airplane off the ground. I mean, I learned a long time ago, good leadership is empowering people. That's right. So I just realized I'm going to empower my team. I don't run my office. My team runs my office. Katrina has right. been with me for, she's my CA that started as the CA. She runs my office now. She's been with me uh, for 19 years, celebrating yeah. 19 years. And I've had every chiropractor try to steal her. I've had all these things. She could have left. It wasn't about the money. It's about how I take care of her. It's how I look after her. And here's the deal. It's never about the money. Don't make it about the money. It's about your heart of service and how well do you empower. I send them out to get trained. I send them to seminars. I send them to Landmark Forum. I send them out for personal development. Here's what I realized. This isn't a business transaction. If I sow into people and I make, here's the thing. I build big people. And if I build big people, I'll get big results. That's right. And guess what? They won't want to go anywhere else because I care about them as an individual. I'm not treating them as a business transactional. I'm very relational. So I want to let them know that I want to get them developed. I want to do that. Now I've developed some CAs and then they become chiropractors because they got so passionate about it. That's part of it. You know what? I'm sowing and I'm reaping, but every once in a while I lose a great CA to chiropractic. I'm okay with that because I know you know what? If I honor those that God sends me, he's going to send me those that he honors. And I want the best of the best. That's why I've had the best chiropractors. I have people that want to stay with me. I had to kick the one chiropractor out that was with me for seven years and I helped them open a practice. So it, I did that because I realized that he couldn't stay with me forever. He's with me seven years is great. Did it suck to lose him? Yeah, but guess what? I gained a colleague that got back in practice, practice with his wives, were great friends. And then guess what? I had another chiropractor that was even, you know, he's an amazing person that said, dude, I want what he had. I want to be with you. And then he leveled up my practice. New levels, new devils. You know, it's just about not being in fear and constricting. When you go in fear and make fear-based decisions because of lack of money, then you constrict. And when you constrict, you can't heal. How you do anything right. is how you do everything. We need to expand. We got to think bigger. You get around bigger thinking people, you'll think bigger because of it. If I play pickleball with better people, I'll get better. If you get around chiropractic, most chiropractors, they get around other like-minded chiropractors. And then if you don't, if they don't stretch you or make you think different, then you stay the same. Sure, I could be overwhelming because guess what? Your thought process is still small. And, it, and what I'm doing is causing a contradiction in your life because you're like, whoa, that guy's too much. But it's okay. Just be willing to grow. I'm not saying you don't have to be Matt Hubbard. I don't want a Matt Hubbard covering copy. I want you to be you, but I want you to not let your ceiling hold you down. Your ceiling has to be your next floor. So you've got to level up your life, level up your thinking, level up your game, level up how you do things. When people say, uh, say, I want to see 250 people a week. I go, how many you see? And they go, ah, about, about 120. I said, okay, can I be honest with you? You don't want to see 250 people. Yeah, no, I do. I do. No, you're actually seeing the exact amount you want to be seeing. If you want to see 250, you got to do a lot of things different. Are you willing to do a lot of things different? That's right. If you're willing, good. So I want you to sit me down your dream list, send me your dream list. Someone told me to do that. Guess what? They'd have that dream list in about 45 minutes. You know, on average right now, it takes them two days to give me that dream list. I call them back and go, when you're serious about coaching, you let me know. Click. You know what I mean? Two days. That's ridiculous. Two days. Yeah. Instead of dream. I just asked to give you the easiest extra two days. You don't want to see 250 people. You're okay just where you're at because you're what you just did showed me you're not hungry enough. When yeah. you're hungry enough, you'll do it. So there's two other questions I want to ask you, buddy. One is celebrating with your team. You mentioned taking your team to Cabo and I, I, I meet with a few docs that they don't do that at all. They, they don't feel like they have the money. They're, they're living in fear financially and therefore they're not getting the buy-in that they want. And their thought is, well, I'm paying them hourly and you know, it's their job, you know? And, and so kind of speak into how right. important that is for you to celebrate with your team. I'm going to tell you right now, my, my girls, I, you know what I say when I hire them? This isn't a job. This is a lifestyle. So if you want a job, I own a restaurant. Let me hire you over there. <laughs> you can make sandwiches. 
Don't there don't come go. with the job mentality and work for me. The job mentality is going to keep you limited. And, and guess what? I need you to have a heart for people. Guess who my number one refers are in my practice? If I hire somebody and they haven't referred in people they know within the first six weeks, they, I'm going to tell you something. They didn't get the big idea. I agree. My, my, totally agree. my people come in. It's amazing to me. Before I hire you, I run you through my whole new patient process. You watch the video, you learn everything, you get an ROT, you get everything, you come to the class and I go, do you still want to work here? You know what they do? This is the greatest thing. Oh my, I would totally want to work here. And then guess what? I watch it good, blah, blah, blah. As soon as they refer to man, I took my whole team, but one person to Parker. And then I said, why aren't you taking me to Parker? I said, this is just a job to you. So I'm only taking people that are invested. It's a big investment for me to take you to Parker, pay for it, blah, blah, blah. You don't want to do it. And they go, okay, that's fair. And I go, great. So I just let it go. Yeah. And then here's the truth is because they were more passionate about something else. So I helped them get into what they want to do. So they wanted to be a chef and a blah, blah, blah. So I just helped them do that. They're working with me part-time because they love working for me. They love the energy. They love everything. So they work for me. And then they're now going to be a professional chef, which is totally cool. I'm just not going to waste money on people that are not vested. If you're well, invested and, in my vision, I'm invested in you. By you staying in tech with, within integrity on that topic is what actually helped that person find their true calling. So that's actually, that's just living out the gospel right there. Now, let me, let me just say from my experience, I came to visit you like 13 years ago, had a great time, met Katrina. I, I could not believe that I, I didn't watch you as much. I watched her more probably, but I was so impressed by how calm she was. And then I realized, well, they have rock solid systems, man. They are dialed in. Yeah. And so I just was taking notes. I was, again, you were amazing. But how important is it for your integrator, Katrina, and yourself and your key associates to be in their own kind of accountability mastermind groups? I know you got your team group, but do you um, find that it's important for some of these key team members to also have groups of other people like them in the profession that they rub shoulders with? Yeah, yeah. I used to do that, but now... I, I don't want to lower the bar. So I try to, yeah. you know what I mean? Honestly, at this point, my team's so dialed. I don't even waste time. I, like there's a lot of amazing things. If you don't have access to some of the things I've done, I mean, in fairness, yes, I want them iron sharpens iron. Right, so right. I would have them watch videos. I'd have them do it. Like I hired um, a coach last year just to train my team with not my voice for one year. I oh, wanted I them to that. have one year, not my voice speaking into the thing. Yes of what we do. It was, it was amazing. And oh, then I, see, I it think back that's over. beautiful. Yeah. Wow. You know, we could, we need to do a whole seminar on this because a lot of docs are going to respond well to this because they're struggling in this area and they just keep hitting their head against the wall. And, and they, I, I, I talk with these guys. I meet with them all the time. And yeah, um, but here's the it, thing, you know what? I offer so many things people like the thing is I don't do well with victim mentality. If you want it, like Katrina, guess what I say, send them down. I'll buy lunch. Your CA can watch my practice all morning long and then hang out with my CA all afternoon and I'll pay my CA to train your CA. All you got to do is get them here. Could be a $250 ticket. It could be fly down the morning, fly out that night. They're not away. Some of them don't want to invest $250 and they're going to get some of the greatest coaching that CA has ever got, going to build them up. They're going to come back like on fire. But you know what? When the CA becomes more on fire than the doctor, we got problems. Katrina is more chiropractic than 90% of chiropractors. So, I mean, I, she, she, I would calls agree. Chiropract- she, she calls chiropractors to the corner all the time. Like, what do you mean? Like, let's go on purpose saying, what are your goals? I'm not sure okay. what my goals are. How many you want to see? What's your patient vision average? How much money are you collecting? Good. What's the average weekly? What's your, they're like, what, what? Just focus, go get some fundamentals. Okay. Like, it's amazing. Like, if you want to level up practice and get all the keys to unlock all your dreams, put the work in hundreds of car. I went and found it. I went and found it. You just can't sit back thinking they're going to come to you. Well, I think the question that should haunt every chiropractor, and I know you and I both pray and think about this a lot is, is the legacy that we leave behind. And like you said, success leaves clues and chiropractor needs guys like you and I to leave these legacies behind because as amazing as you and I are in practice, our practices would survive without us, right? We know that already. We're not ready for that, but we know that there is a legacy that's been laid down that's going to live three, four generations of chiropractors beyond your and my time on this planet. I love that about you 
Any yeah. more encouraging words on that topic before we close? I'm going to leave you with these four things and then we could wrap it. Four pillars. It's what I've learned. Number one, fundamentals. I call it the foundation. Build your foundation solid. Figure out where you're weak. Go fortify the foundation. So foundations. Be real with yourself. Do you have core values? Does your whole team know them? Are they in alignment with them? If they're not in alignment, tell them to go find a job somewhere else. Number two, acceleration. So first you build the foundation. Then you got to accelerate new patients, build, build everything you can do, accelerate. Where are you at right now, chiropractor? Do you need to build the foundation? Okay, let's just say your foundation's good. Accelerate. How's your new patients? How's your communications? How's your results of your test? How's your class? How do you get people to pay, stay, and refer? That's all acceleration. Number three, battleship. How do you battleship your office? That's with financial plans. Battleship your life. Do you have life insurance? Do you have all the things? Do you have do you have a um uh you know, a trust. Do you have all the things that are now battleshipping up your life so you can have a life? So it's foundation, acceleration, battleship your life, battleship your practice. And then the last tier is legacy. You can't be thinking about legacy until you battleship your life. You right. can't think about battleshipping until you learn to accelerate. That's you can't right. think about any of it till you build your foundation on your philosophy and your core values. Foundation, accelerate, battleship, legacy. That's your pyramid. There's four pillars that hold up the roof. Worry about your four pillars. Strengthen your four pillars. God bless you. Wow, what a better way to close than that. Okay, hey, for those of you on this call right now, you just got blessed, as did I, and I'm so glad that you took the time to do this. You know, time spent on personal development is never time wasted. And right now, what the world needs the most is for chiropractors to step up and play big. Yeah. Um, this is not our time to be small, you guys. And so I hope these episodes are a blessing to you. I want to once again thank Cairo Touch and their leadership and their team for not only putting a great product out there, but also the spirit behind these podcasts. Uh, when, when they told me that their idea on this, I was so impressed that they want to truly help chiropractic as a profession. It's not just about a new client or it's not just about money to them. They want to see chiropractic thrive just like Matt and I do. So once again, thank you, Cairo Touch. And Matt, thanks again. I can't wait to have you back on. And I love thanks, your brother. Man. And for all of you out there, make sure you do what Matt says and get adjusted, eat right, get to your ideal weight, get ripped so that chiropractic can advance and be ready for this. Let's go, right? Let's go. All right, man. Hey, God bless you all. And thanks again for tuning in.